there are five slightly different kinds of Riemann sums. Actually, there's an infinite number of Riemann sums, but there are five that have a name that we care about. Remember, though, that every Riemann sum is the same idea. It's the sum of some x value, sorry, some y value, times some x distance. We're going to keep doing that over and over and over again. The question is, how do we decide what y value to use? And that's where we see these different Riemann sums coming up. It's about making a different decision about which y value to use. We'll start with the easier, more obvious ones. The left Riemann sum and the right Riemann sum says that um, the left Riemann sum is within every interval of x values, you choose the x value on the leftmost piece of your interval to decide what y value to use in your product. So, for example, let's look at this graph, and I will do a left Riemann sum. Um, I'm told here to use five subintervals, and just to make our lives easier, I will make those five subintervals evenly spread out. So my delta x will be one no matter what. A left Riemann sum would choose the y value from the leftmost point of every interval. So for this first interval from 0 to 1, I will choose the y value from here, which is about 3. And I will make a product of that y value times that x distance, and that's my first product. For the second interval from 1 to 2, I will use the x value that's farthest on the left, which would be 1, to find the y value, or f of 1, and I will use that y value to make my product of y times dx. And I will keep doing that for every interval, so from 2 to 3, I will choose the x value farthest on the left to pick the y value. the last, next interval from 3 to 4, I will choose the x value of 3 to find the y value, to multiply by dx to make my product. Each one of those rectangles, remember, is looks like a rectangle, but it is a product of a y value times a dx. The last interval from 4 to 5, I will use the y value all the way on the left, the x value all the way on the left to find the y value to make into a product. What I want you to notice here is that some of these products are clearly underestimates. Sorry, yeah, those are clearly underestimates. Some of them are clearly overestimates. And I can't really tell you just by looking whether the underestimates or the overestimates are stronger. It certainly looks like the um, overestimates are stronger, so overall this left Riemann sum would be an overestimate. But there's no rule for that. A right Riemann sum would do almost the exact same thing, except instead of for every interval choosing the leftmost x value, I'm going to choose the rightmost y value, sorry, the rightmost x value to find the y value to multiply by dx and make a product. Choose the rightmost x value to pick the y value to multiply by dx to make a product. I'm going to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Choose the rightmost x value to find the y value to multiply by dx to make a product. Two more. Choose the rightmost x value to pick the y value to multiply by dx to make a product. Choose the rightmost x value to find the y value to multiply by dx and make a product. That would be a right Riemann sum. One thing I want you to notice about this right Riemann sum and this might not be perfect, because I was drawing this all pretty loosely by hand, but 
it should match up pretty well with four of the five columns, four of the five products from the right room ensemble. Those are pretty much exactly the same thing for four of the five columns. The only difference is that because those four columns, those those four that I picked were from, you know, I, I still used the same one, two, three, and four, and I used f of one, two, three, and four here also. Those things are all in common. I used the same y values to make my rectangles there. The difference is in the rectangle on the left, when I did the left sum, I also used that rectangle, and then the the Riemann sum on the right, I used that one. So there's going to be a small difference, but they're not going to be that different from each other, especially if you imagine me using a lot, a lot, a lot of rectangles. Well, just the little bit at the ends shouldn't make that much of a difference. The next two are the lower and upper Riemann sums, and those are very different from the left and right. There are a lot of important differences. What we're going to do for the lower sum is from every interval, or every sub-interval, I should say, I'm going to choose the lowest y value to multiply by dx and make a product. In the next interval, I'm going to choose the lowest y value in the entire interval to multiply by dx and make a product. In the next interval, I'm going to choose the lowest y value to multiply by dx and make a product. The lowest y value to multiply by dx and make a product. And last one, the lowest y value to multiply by dx and make a product. And what I want you to notice is that these different y values that I chose, one of them was on the left, one of them was on the right, Another one was on the right. Two of them were somewhere in the middle. There's no rule or rhyme or reason where the lower and upper sums are going to fall, meaning which x value from within the subinterval we're going to use. The upper Riemann sum, hopefully you can guess at this point, is the same idea as the lower sum, but instead of choosing the minimum y value from each interval, we'll choose the so instead of choosing that minimum, we'll choose the highest point. So that's the highest point, highest y value anywhere in the subinterval. The highest. And we'll keep doing that. Until we have all five rectangles. The problem with the lower and the upper sum is that they are very hard to find practically because figuring out what this highest and lowest y values are in each case, well, that's a little bit complicated. Like finding what this lowest y value is here or there or this highest one here, it's not so obvious. Sometimes it's not so bad because it overlaps with the left or the right, you know, and it's not so hard. But usually it's not so obvious. So we're very, very rarely going to be asked to mathematically find the lower or the upper sum. But the theory behind them is very important. You might say to yourself, wait, the lower sum stinks because it's always, always, always going to be an underestimate. Every single one of these spaces is an underestimate. There's no balancing out of the overestimate. And the opposite is true for the upper sum. All of these spaces are overestimates, which means that the upper sum is going to be way too big. But the truth is that that is a feature, not a bug. That's a good thing. Because if you know that the lower estimate is always going to be an underestimate, and you know that the upper estimate is always going to be an overestimate, you can squeeze the two of them together, because you know the actual definite integral is going to be somewhere in between those two. You can use the squeeze theorem to squeeze them together to find the actual definite integral. We'll get to that later on. One more 
Riemann sum to calculate is called the midpoint sum, which is much, much, much more similar to the left and right sums than it is the lower and the upper sums. The idea with the midpoint sum is for every sub-interval, you choose the x value that's right smack in the middle to find the y value to multiply and make your product which sometimes can be a bit annoying because you end up using slightly more awkward fractions or decimals. In between 0 and 1 is 1 half. So I would have to, whatever this function is, I would have to find f of 1 half for this y value, which sometimes isn't so bad, sometimes is kind of annoying. And then I have to find f of 1 and a half, which would be around there. The advantage to the midpoint sum is just like the symmetric difference quotient, we kind of assume that the midpoint will balance out the overestimating and the underestimating, and although we can't assume it's perfectly balanced, it'll at least be pretty good at finding a decent approximation of the definite integral. That's why it's convenient for us. It's less convenient to actually do.